This edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by Smile, the makers of world-class software like PDF Pen for Mac, PDF Pen Pro for Mac, PDF Pen for iPhone and iPad, PDF Pen Scan Plus for iPhone and iPad, Text Expander for Mac, and Text Expander for iPhone and iPad. Learn more about all their great products at smilesoftware.com. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, it's Take Control time again, this time with the head Take Control guy, Mr. Joe Kissel. Joe, welcome. Hello, nice to be here. It seems like we haven't talked to you for oh, at least a couple of weeks. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> we might this be talking time, again really soon. <laughs> all right, well, that's good. We, all, we like that. But this time, we're here to talk about Joe's latest effort, not one of his authors, but Joe's latest effort, uh, Take Control of Devon Think 3. Joe, we've talked about Devon Think before, but this sounds like this is a whole new book for a whole new Devon Think. Yeah, it really is. Uh, you know, I, I have been a Devon Think user since way, way, way back when. Uh, it's it's a tool that I use to manage all my miscellaneous snippets. You know, um, I have a scanner sitting right over here. I scan uh, paper, and that paper gets. Uh, sent right into uh, Devon Think, you know, does OCR and it indexes all my stuff and, and so forth. So I've been storing uh, information of various kinds in Devon Think for years and years and years. And in uh, it, you know, nine years ago, in 2010, we we did a book. I wrote a book called Take Control of Getting Started with Devon Think 2. And um, we we decided to call it Getting Started With because Devon Think is this huge, really massively complex uh, app with so many features. And I'm like, I can, I can never do justice to all the features in a take control book. If, if I wanted to have like a comprehensive guide to doing everything in Dev and Think, I mean, that would be six, seven, eight hundred pages long. So I, I thought I would be a little bit, you know, undersell it a little bit and say, this is just getting started with it, you know. Yes, it's going to be 200 plus pages long, but it's really just the getting started. And uh, so we did that book. It was, I mean, successful beyond my wildest dreams. It was one of our top selling books of all time. Um, I didn't realize how many Devon Think users there are out there, but man, there are a lot. So we're, we were just thrilled. And that book went through three editions and a bunch of uh, smaller updates but for several years, uh, Devon Technologies has been working on a not a not quite a complete rewrite, but a massive, massive new version uh, going from Devon Think Two to Devon Think Three. And um, we we thought that this was going to ship a couple of years ago. And what with one thing and another, you know. <laughs> in software development and in publishing and in some other areas of life, delays occur. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, sometimes it's Apple's fault. Sometimes it's like whatever. People get sick or go on vacation or switch jobs or technology changes or whatever, whatever, but things happen. And so anyway, a lot of things happened and, uh, the product got delayed and delayed and delayed. And then it start, finally started entering beta testing like early this year. And I'm like, oh, well, we still probably have a couple of years to go because I know how these things go. And, and then a few weeks ago, finally, after, after months and months of beta testing, um, we get this email, hey, it's shipping now. And I'm like, ah, the book isn't done yet. I kind of freaked out, <laughs> like I've been working on the book, but I, I kind of, you know, for one thing, I thought I had more time, but for another thing, I kind of got delayed because of working on a new website, which we've talked about, and the upgrading to Catalina book, which we've talked about. So some, some other things kind of intervened to slow me down. So as a result, I, I was not ready with the book right when Devon Think 3 shipped, which I felt really unhappy about, but but it's done now. <laughs> a few weeks later, it's done. And, um, and, I, and I couldn't be happier. Uh, Devon Think 3 is just amazing. It is so much better than version two and version two was great. And now, now we have a book about it. So um, that's the, that's, that's getting started with 
<laughs> take control of Devon thing three. <laughs> okay, so a couple things here. First off, over on a machine that you can't see is a copy of Devon Think mm -hmm. that I've been using for so many years that I don't even remember exactly how I set up my my uh, my scanner, which is back there, right. to work with it. It's it, because it's been rock solid. The whole the whole system has been wonderful, and so I'm looking forward to you know seeing some of these new features. So I too am a Devon Think user. So I'm quite excited about the book. Cool. But I think we need to take a step back, okay, and ex try to explain. I'm <laughs> good luck to you. Try to explain what Devon Think is because it's not exactly like too many other programs that I can think of. No, it really isn't. I mean, it has been referred to, uh, including by me, as an information manager uh, or a snippet keeper. Or, I mean, so it, it's this app. <laughs> That's right. It's, a, it's an app that runs on your Mac, and there's also an iOS version. And uh, you can put anything you want into it. You can put documents into it, like, you know, PDFs or text edit documents or Word files or pages files or graphics or uh, songs or movies, like pretty much any file you can, you can stick a file in it. You might say, well, okay, but I can stick a file just in a folder in the finder too. So how is Devon Think different or better? Well, um, the, one of the best things about Devon Think is that it does much more elaborate um, indexing of the stuff you put in it. And you can add tons and tons of metadata that you can't add in the finder. And, and version three dramatically expands on this by giving you, by, by letting you like create your own custom metadata. Like I work with books all the time. So I need to have the author's name and the publication date and the ISBN and the uh, number of pages and like all these, all these kinds of details about books that you probably don't need for other files, but that's, that's fine because I can add them now as, as, and then I can search on all that. So Devin Think has incredibly rich, powerful filtering, sorting, searching, um, smart groups, which are like uh, smart folders in the finder. And it makes it way easier to find stuff than just if they're just files out in the, out in the finder. But finding things isn't isn't all. You can also create documents within DevonThink. You can create plain text or rich text or HTML or markdown files uh, within DevonThink. You can mark up uh, PDFs and graphics. You know, you can edit graphics. You can do annotations. Um, you can you can use um, you can use DevonThink as like an RSS reader if you're into that. You can view web pages, live web pages in DevonThink. And anything that you see, you can say, oh yeah, let's save a copy of this. Let's, you know, it's it's a fleeting article that I found someplace. Let's let's save a copy of it. While you're working in Safari or Chrome or Firefox, you can also save stuff into Devon Think. There's a, tons and tons of ways to get stuff from other places into the app or to create stuff or edit stuff within the app. And and I and I say in the book, this this app is so powerful. I mean, you, you although it's a little bit cumbersome, you can send and receive email in the app. You can browse the web in the app. You can play music in the app. It's not as good as Apple's music app. It's not as good as photos for those particular things. But depending on what kind of work you do, you could theoretically do like almost all the stuff you ever need to do inside this one app. And the great thing is that most of its tools are more powerful than, you know, or, or build upon what Apple's uh, own apps offer. So, you know, Preview can do PDF editing and, 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 and Devon Think includes a lot of those features, but also adds some other things that Preview can't do. And the same kinds of things are, are true for a lot of other different apps, text edit and so forth. So it's a, it's a really super powerful information management tool. One of, the, one of the really neat and unique things about it is that it helps you to find connections between documents. So I have thousands and thousands of documents in DevonThink and I, I create uh, folders, which DevonThink refers to as groups. And I have a new document, oh, I've just scanned this thing and it's a receipt or it's a whatever. 
And now, where does this go? I think this might go in this subgroup of this subgroup. I, I don't have to do that. I just say, hey, put this where it belongs. And it uses artificial intelligence to compare the contents of this thing that I just added to the contents of all these different folders and say, oh, well, this is most similar to this folder. Should I put it there for you? Great. Um, and it can say, hey, you know, you might not have realized, but this document you have about this person in this place is really similar to this other document about this thing in this place. And you can, you can start to see connections between things that you might not have seen otherwise. Some, something, something like that you would never, ever be able to find in the finder. So, I mean, th that's just like the, the barest tip of the iceberg, but it is a, a super powerful information management tool that can suck in information from almost any place, add new information, categorize it, find connections, and then you can do stuff with it, like you know, sharing it with other people in various ways and uh, converting file formats, all that kind of stuff. It's, it's a really, really cool and powerful app. That's probably about as good a description as I could have ever, I've, as I've ever heard of Devin Think, because, uh, and I know that I don't use a serious uh, percentage of its power, but what I do use it for, it is, it's, it's phenomenal. And I, I, I wouldn't want to think about how much time that I would have to spend organizing those those pieces of information that I store in Devon Think and trying to figure out a way to have it make sense and have it as searchable as it is. Um, yeah. Because un unless something changes with the new version, which I'd be shocked at, it pretty much stores stuff in standard document formats right. so that, you know, should something go wrong for whatever reason, you're not just locked into this proprietary organized database of things, you, you would still be able to make use of your information. Absolutely. So all of the files that you import into DevonThink are still available in their original native formats um, in a special little location in the finder. So if, as long as you know where to look, um, you can get at the, the raw original files. Um, and in addition to that, if you so choose, you can just say, hey, Devin Think, don't even import this. Don't make a copy of it that you'll store in, in this special place. Just index it. Just, just suck in all the data about this and uh, learn everything you can about this file so that it's still, you know, searchable and taggable and all those kinds of things. Um, but but with the original being left where it is. So you can, you can use either or both of those techniques. You can mix and match however you like. And um, I, I never worry that, you know, because something happens to my Devon Think database, my documents are gonna be lost because no, they're really, just, they're really just documents and they're sitting out there in a package in the finder and they're backed up with the rest of my stuff. So it's all good. Okay, so selfish question here. As a Devon Think Pro or Devon Think user now, um, and looking to make the upgrade, how easy is the transition conversion? Whatever, as far as just the, the, the process, is it just a matter of closing the old version, opening the new one, and saying here, here, here it is, and go? Pretty much, yes. So uh, the new version uses the same file format. So it's automatically going to detect your old databases and say, you, sh you, want, you want to use these now? And you say, yeah. And it's going to suck in your old settings and it's basically going to be good. Now, um, the new version, I mean, and it changes things. So there are new things you can do now that you could never do before. There are also a few features that went away or that, that changed nature fairly significantly. So your data is going to be fine. You are going to have to spend some time getting used to the new environment, you know, looking around, finding, oh, this is called that now? Really? It's moved over here now? Oh, I used to be able to do things this way. Well, now I got to do them. Okay, that's, you know, you don't have to worry. Like, I, I don't feel like any of the things that that changed or or went away have, have made my life poorer. Um, but I everything that has changed. I'm like, ah, uh, yeah, I see why that, why that had to happen. I, I see why, I see why the new way of doing things is ultimately better. Um, even if it, even if it was a thing that I, that I liked doing before I can, you know, after, after a little bit of adjustment, I can see, yes, actually the new way is, is much better. So 
Um, I, I found the transition to be pretty painless. Now, you, you pointed at the uh, Fujitsu ScanSnap scanner over your shoulder, um, which, of course, uh, Devin Think has always supported and supported well. I have one of those, too. I have a, a black one, but it's the it's same kind of a thing. Um, Fujitsu changed their software a lot, um, and this was in order to have, I forget, Mojave compatibility or something. Anyway, they... At, at, at one of the one of the OS uh, boundaries, they they released new software, and um, if you're using the new software, then you have to go into into their software and do a few extra setup steps because um, it used to be that that Devon Think could configure your Fujitsu software for you, but now they can't. It's not a big deal. It's like it's like a two minute process, but now you have to follow. All of my instructions <laughs> go to go set up your new uh, ScanSnap Home software the right way so that it'll talk to Devon thing. But it's a one-time thing. Once you've done that, you're good, and you get that same integration that you were always used to before. And of course, Devon Think works with lots of different scanners and and other ways of getting stuff in. That right there might be one of the most important reasons to get the book, Joe. What after after all this development and all this long wait? What are some of the new cool capabilities of, of Devon Think 3? Okay. Well, the first thing everyone will notice who is used to the old version is that it, it looks different. Um, so one of the things uh, Devon Think has done is they've adopted the kind of interface that you see in apps like Pages and Numbers and Keynote. So instead of having lots of different windows, floating palettes and drawers and doohickeys, Almost all of Devon Think is now in one window. And on the left-hand side, you have a sidebar. And what's in the sidebar changes depending on the context. And on the right-hand side, you have an inspector. And what's in the inspector changes depending on context or, or what you select. So you can say, well, I want to look at this now. Then I want to look at this aspect of this. So uh, it's for the most part, it's a, it's a cleaner and... Uh, less cluttered interface. It's also one that works, in my opinion, better on smaller screens than the old one did. The old, the old interface, if you had a big screen, it was great. On a small screen, it was a little bit, a little bit rough um, because you know, you got to find space for all these different windows. So, um, so just moving stuff around like that is, is one thing. Uh, there's a the Devon Think feature called the sorter. And the sorter is an optional thing that, uh, it used to be that it runs in a little tab and you click the tab and it sh slides out from wherever you've, you've put it. And then you can drag stuff into the sorter if you wanna drag stuff into a particular group or, or tag or whatever, you, you drag stuff in and then this little thing would just pop shut again. So the sorter still exists, it's still optional, but it's been totally, totally redesigned. It looks nothing like it did before. Um, it's available both as a little slide out doohickey and as a menu extra if you prefer it that way. And um, it's, it's really much more powerful now because now you can, without any configuration, you can just drag something into the sorter and put it anywhere in your database you want. You can apply tags, you can create new notes to yourself or capture URLs, or do all kinds of stuff in the sorter now. So it's, it's easier to use and more powerful. Um, Devon Think 3 has done a lot with automation. So a couple of examples, there are now reminders. So you're used to having, you know, a reminder attached to uh, a calendar event, for example. Hey, put, you know, throw up an alarm uh, five minutes before this thing happens. You know, you can, you can set alarms in the reminders app, you can set an alarm um, in, in the calendar app. Uh, well, now you can do that same thing with any Devon Think document, it's a PDF or it's a graphic or it's a note to yourself or whatever it is, or even if it's a group or a tag, everything in Devon Think can now have a reminder. So I'm gonna say every Tuesday at 8 a.m. do something. Or, you know, on October 15th at 7.45, do this thing. Or, you know, every other uh, every the fir first day of every other month or whatever. So they can either be one shot or recurring. And then at the time that you set, whatever you want can happen. It can be a, a, a sound plays or some, 
you know, some text is spoken or a thing appears on the screen or a document opens or an Apple script runs. So, uh, so that's one aspect of, of automation is you can get anything in Dev and Think to, to do something else of your choice on a schedule. Uh, another really powerful thing is smart rules. So Dev and Think already had this concept of smart groups, which is like smart folders, basically a saved search. You look for a document that meets these criteria, whatever criteria you set. So it's something that, you know, has these words in the, in the file name and this label and was created within this date range or whatever. You, you set up whatever criteria you want. So those still exist, but now they have an additional thing called a smart rule. And uses the same kind of criteria. Okay, look for a document that matches what I'm looking for. But when you find it, do something. So, uh, for, for example, I could say, whenever a document with these criteria shows up in my inbox, send an email to Chuck <laughs> saying whatever. Or whenever I import a PDF, um, you know, assign certain tags to it. Or whenever I sync my files to Dropbox, uh, you know, any, any files that match these criteria do this stuff to them. And the, the, the range of stuff you can do is just massive. And, and once again, it includes AppleScript. Devon Think has amazing AppleScript support. And it comes with like well over 100 uh, pre-written AppleScripts to do all kinds of uh, neat things for you. So... If, if there's anything that you'd like to automate, um, Dev and Think can probably do that for you. And, and it's really, really cool. So somebody uh, that I follow on Twitter compared this to Hazel. So Hazel is, is a utility that, you know, look, you say, look in this folder and every, anytime a new file appears in this folder, check for certain criteria. And if it meets this, do this, like import my uh, songs into iTunes or music, import my photos into photo or photos or do whatever to whatever. So um, the new uh, smart rules in Devon Think are a lot like that. It looks in a place for a file matching certain criteria, and when it, when you know, when it finds that, and any certain trigger occurs, like you know, a, a file is copied or moved, or sync happens, or Devon Think opens or quits or whatever, various uh, triggers, then it does the action or actions that you've set. So it's it, it it it's kind of one of those things is you know the only limit is your imagination. It's it's really cool. Um, it has a, a feature called Sheets. It's, it's had that for a long time. Um, sheet is supposed to evoke spreadsheet, but really it's just like a table. It's not, it's not a sheet in the sense of doing calculations or that kind of a thing. What's new in Devon Think 3, though, is every, every column in your sheet can have a certain data type format. So this is a text column, and this is a number column, and this is a date column, and um, this is, you know, a multi-line text column and so forth. So you can uh, control the formats and the display of information in your sheets um, with, with much greater uh, precision. Um, there are smart templates now. So a, a template is just kind of a, you know, a fill in the blank thing, which can include variables. Like, you know, when I, every, every time I make a new document with this template, oh, fill in the name, uh, you know, my username here, fill in the date there, fill in this information here. So those are those still exist, but now there are also smart templates, which again are based on Apple script and let you say, all right, now I'm going to create a new Devon Think document, but uh, in the process of doing that, wait a minute, I've got to go fetch some information from contacts. Oh, and I have to go look up something on the web. Oh, and I have to fetch something else from some other app and do some other computations. And now I'm going to take all this information that I've collected and use that to create my new document or new documents. So um, th those are just a few <laughs> of like, I mean, dozens and dozens and dozens of new features. It is, it is such a, such a gigantic upgrade. Uh, I, I, you know, go, go, go to the Devon Think website and there's a page that tells you about all the new features. And, uh, and of course you can download a, a free trial version too, but it's really quite something. Smile and Text Expander are sponsoring this edition of Mac Voices. Do you want to do something quick and easy to improve your productivity? Want something that is bulletproof that will improve the quality of your work? 
Are you looking for a utility that can integrate with just about any program on your Mac to make it better? If so, you're looking for Text Expander from Smile. Text Expander works pretty much everywhere on the Mac inside just about any program. Desktop publishing, email, web publishing, browsers, task management applications, chat applications, the list goes on and on. Because all of those require text entry, and Text Expander helps you enter text quickly and accurately. Have a word, phrase, paragraph, or page that you need inserted regularly? Text Expander does it with a few keystrokes. Have a word that you misspell frequently? Text Expander can help you fix that so that it never happens again. Want to standardize wording to customer inquiries across your entire team? Text Expander is the answer. With almost no learning curve and massive payback on the time invested, you should be using Text Expander. Visit TextExpander.com right now, download a free trial, and find out what so many of the productivity experts already know. Text Expander from Smile, the makers of world class software. Thanks to Smile for being the longest running sponsor of Mac Voices. You know, I, I get a little concerned that as we describe all this stuff, that you can do all this and, you know, you reach over here and you pull that together and, you know, spin it around and that, that people will be intimidated by it. And it's really, for all its power, I don't think, and, and I haven't even seen the, the new version yet, but it's not that intimidating if you just kind of start slow and have one or two things that you want to do in mind. Even if it's something as simple as just having, for lack of a better term, an electronic filing cabinet to scan your bills or, or go paperless. I mean, if you just start there, because that's where I started, and then you slowly think, and well, gee, I, it'd be nice if I could do this. It'd be nice if I could do that. And so you go and look up uh, something in Joe's book and find out how to do it. And pretty soon you are doing, you know, reaching over here and sticking this and connecting that and turning it around and making use of the real power of the program. Right. I mean, I, I agree with all that. Uh, it, it is it is an app that although it has all this power, it's not, it, it's not intimidating. Like you can just, any, anybody with basic familiarity with Mac apps can like drag a file out and say, Oh yeah, okay. I get this, you know? And, but it, at the same time, it rewards exploration. The thing is though, uh, and I, I think kind of the, the impetus for this book is that a lot of people download the app and they start using it and they feel, you know, some time goes by and they're like, okay, I get it. Like I can drag stuff in and I can label it. And I can, I can search for it, but I feel like I'm not really getting all of the power, you know, like there, it feel, feels like this app is so much more powerful than, than the use that I am making of it. Um, and that's why I have this book to help you draw out some more of that stuff to help you notice some of these things. So like Devin Think comes with a user manual and it's actually a really good manual. It's, it's, I mean, I didn't write it, but it's still pretty good. You know? it's, it's <laughs> as, as, as app documentation goes, you know, so it's, it's a fine manual, but um, it, it's certainly more biased toward, it's more of a reference guide. Like, well, here's what this button does. And here's what this menu command does. And here are the different things you can do here. And that's fine. And that's really useful. And I relied on the manual as I was writing my book to answer a lot of my own questions. But my approach to documentation is different. I, I am not trying to list every menu command and every variable and every label and every everything. Like I am not out, I do not set out to create a comprehensive reference guide. I set out to figure out what kinds of things you want to do and here's how to do those things. And so uh, you, you are probably interested in, well, how do I get stuff in? What kinds of things can I do with my documents once they're in? Well, I, I maybe I'm really interested in editing PDFs. Okay, great, go to the edit PDFs chapter and you know we'll learn about that stuff. Or maybe I'm really interested in, you know, automation or whatever the, whatever your thing is. Um, I, I try to have more of a task oriented pro approach. Like here, here's the kind of thing you're trying to get done. Here's how you do that. And if my, you know, in my description of how you do things, I'm, I'm going to leave out a lot of features and I'm go because there are, there's a lot of stuff there that like, 
I don't, I, I don't know why you, I don't know why somebody would do this. Like, I mean, like there's so many preferences and I'm like, okay, I guess I get why that checkbox is there. And I have a feeling that it was there because one guy during beta testing said, oh, I sure wish I could do this. And the developer's like, yeah, okay, we'll throw that in there for that one guy, <laughs> you know? So, you know, my, my aim isn't to document everything that's there. My aim is to, to figure out as best I can what activities people want to use this app for and say, here's the best or the easiest way to do that. And I sort of peppered these little sidebars that I call stepping stones throughout the book to, to try to walk you through some of the preliminaries. So I was like, okay, brand new Devon Thank user, great. Let's just create a new database. This is just for play, okay? This is just a sandbox. You're gonna, this is just to learn about it. Just drag a bunch of stuff in, drag some text files, some word files, some graphics, just drag some stuff in there. And now we can play with this. Let's create some groups. Let's do some rules. Let's do some stuff. Just, just explore in this safe, you know, sandbox where you're not going to break anything. Now, once you've got the hang of it, you can say, okay, great. Now I'm going to create a real database that I'm actually going to use with live data. So I'm, I'm trying to get you over that hump of, um, you know, getting started, yeah, but I mean, it's it's more a matter of feeling feeling like you you've got your money's worth out of this app. Like you you're really tapping into a, a large percentage of the useful things it can do for you. I, I this is probably not a, a fair comparison, but I feel like there there are some comparisons here to fo- something like Photoshop, um, except that. I'm I'm greatly encouraged by your comments about how the interface has been revised so it looks more like an Apple interface that folks are familiar with, numbers or pages or keynote or whatever, uh, because I think that, that automatically makes it more approachable as opposed to the, um, you know, insane number of palettes and menus and everything that Photoshop does. Yeah, and you know, Photoshop yeah. is an interesting example because it's it's – probably very roughly comparable in terms of its, of its, you know, the, the breadth of its features, but, you know, a a Photoshop book can tell you, you know, here, here's what this thing does, or here's how to do this with this thing. But when the Photoshop manual gets to the point of saying, okay, now using the brush tool, uh, paint a portrait, like, I can't do that. (laughs) You know, it's like, it's one thing to say, you know, click this and then drag a rectangle and then this thing will happen. Here's how to apply a filter. But when it, when it was starting to get, when it starts to get into something that actually requires artistic talent, then it kind of loses me because like, that's, that's not my thing. Um, Now with Devon Think, Almost all of it requires no talent because it's because you're just I mean, you're just You're just dealing with files ultimately files and metadata and all of it can be changed There's one thing though, which is which is Apple script. So I Do a little bit to get you started with Apple script and the manual does a little bit to get you started with Apple script And my advice is like, okay, if there's something you want to automate and you think it it can be done with Apple script and you don't know much Apple script. Best thing to do is to look at one of the hundred plus, you know, pre-written scripts that come with it and look, you know, see how it does what it does and try to mess with that and, and, and use that as a starting point. If you want to learn the Apple script language in its entirety, that's a bigger deal. That requires one of those 1200 page books, you know? And, and it requires also some creativity. It's, it's you know, I, I can teach you how to tell Devon Think to do a specific thing, but I can't teach you how to program in Apple Script in this book. That's just, you know, that's a bigger deal. So there, there are certain points, and that's the most prominent one where I have to punt a little bit. Um, I mean, I've, I've written lots of Apple scripts and it's fine. And I have, I have that a lot of that background, so it's fine with me, but it's, it's, um, it's the sort of thing where a lot of people are, are probably going to be really, really content 
just using the pre-written Apple scripts because they're really useful and they're really good. And some people are going to say, ah, oh, yeah, but you know, if it just did this one thing a little bit differently, and then they'll figure out how to go in and modify one of those things to just do that little different thing. If you want to do like super heavy duty stuff, yeah, you're, you're really going to have to learn Apple script and I can only offer limited help there. One of the reasons I shied away from the Photoshop example is that, I mean, you, you're right. You know, you say, okay, do a portrait. Well, I don't have a clue as to where to start. But the thing about, there have been a thousand books written about Photoshop that are basically recipes. You know, if you do these 25 things, then you get this effect. Mm -hmm. I have no idea how those folks figure out those 25 things. Um, but here, it feels like with Devin Think, it's a little more, you know, it's, it's scratch that. It's a lot more logical because you know what you're trying to accomplish. And to your point, you're working with just data, with files and yeah. manipulating that. And so it's a, it's much more understandable than, you know, the, the Photoshop thing. So I, 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 by using that example, I do not want to scare folks away from it because while the power is similar, um, the understanding, I think, is a lot easier with Devin Think. For sure, for sure. Um, but But, you know, it is... It is a, a super powerful and super flexible program. And um, it, like, like I say, it really rewards exploration. So you can, you can get started with it really easily and gently. And then you're going to go, well, I wonder what that icon does. And I wonder if there's some way to do this. And how would I do this? And so you look in my book or you look in the documentation and you kind of go, oh, that's cool. Oh, and by the way, it can also do this other thing. Wow. And so... Um, if you haven't used Devon Think before, it's one of those apps, you know, Nicest Writer is another one that, um, that as you explore all the stuff you can do, um, there's kind of like, oh, you mean it can do that too? Like a lot of those kind of wow moments. And I just, I love apps like that. And, um, and, I, and I even love that, um, you know, Devon Think goes out of its way to be a good citizen, to integrate with as many other different apps as possible, even apps that you might consider kind of a competitor like Tinderbox. Tinderbox is also sort of in that snippet keeper category. It has a different way of doing things, but there are lots of different ways that Tinderbox and Devon Think can talk to each other and they're very happy to talk to each other. And, and, I, and I love that they are embracing their you know, quote unquote competition rather than just saying, you know, it's, it's us or them. It can be everybody. Yeah. Agreed. So one thing I think folks are really going to like about this book is the price. Yeah. You know, this, uh, this book, I, I, I've been, I, I don't want to say I've been writing it for years. I've been poking at it for years and, you know, really seriously working on it for the last several months um, it, it's not entirely rewritten, but it's a lot of it was rewritten and it, it has grown by like 40 some pages from the old book. And, and not only that, but we have now decided that we are going to definitely update this book quarterly from now on, or at least for the foreseeable future. So, um, there, there is a lot of new material here and I spent a lot of time on it. Uh, the last the last book, the previous book, cost $14.99. And um, for, for this new, very much expanded and updated edition, um, we've, we've made a special arrangement to, uh, to sell it for only $0. So we hope that's okay with everybody. Um, we're, we're actually not going to accept your money for it. We're going to give it to you for free because uh, Dem Technologies is sponsoring the book. So they have, they have basically, um, we've, we've worked out an arrangement so that uh, every person who, who has Devon Think 3, Devon Think 3 uh, can get the book for free and uh, money will change hands behind the scenes, but it's not coming out of your pocket, or at least, well, it is, but not, <laughs> not directly. <laughs> it's, it's part of the cost of, of, of buying the app or the upgrade. Um, but we're doing this because we feel and Devon Technologies feels that this information really could be useful to every single Devon Think user. Um, the, the manual is fine. It's great. But this does something different than the manual does. And we really want to make this information as widely available as possible. 
and um, and there's no no better way to do that than to make it free. So uh, so please come to our site and download the book for free or uh, go to the Devon Technologies site and download the book for free. We hope you enjoy it. We hope it, it, um, it gives you a lot of useful ideas and answers a lot of questions. And if you're like, well, I don't know, it feels like Joe kind of phoned in the explanation of blah, blah, blah. I really would like to see 10 pages more detail on this. Well, write to me. And depending on what kind of feedback I get, maybe your idea will be incorporated into a future update because we are planning to update this quarterly. Um, so, I mean, there are practical limits. Like I really don't want this to balloon into a 500 page book, but, but sure, you know, if there are particular topics people um, would like to know more about than what I say, uh, they can ask and I will try to add them. So um, I, I think that's a pretty good deal. Yes, I was going to say the first thing is, um, you know, if you're not happy with the price, then Joe at take, uh, TakeControlBooks.com, I'm sure he would love to hear your letters on why you should. We'll, we'll give you your money back. Yeah, or why he would accept money for it. That's um, right. But also, I'm, I'm kind of excited by this because now I can refer people that maybe would not have taken a look at something like Devin Think. I can give them this book and say, here. You know, if you're really interested in a super powerful tool that you can wrap your head around, look at this book. And it's not going to cost you a thing to look at it. Download the, the, the trial version of Devon Think and, you know, take it for a spin and see what you think. Um, but because it is, it's, it's not like too many other programs. It's, uh, we started out by saying it's difficult to explain and Joe did a, a great job but you still have to really get your hands into it before you appreciate what it can do. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like it's, Hey, we, we got this massive new uh, free book on a great app. So, so go download it, right? Just, just yeah. do it. And I hope you enjoy it. Uh, absolutely. So of course that's take control uh, for the book, Joe, uh, the Devon think website is, uh, devontechnologies.com. And this is D-E-V-O-N technologies. Not like my son, Devin, who is D-E-V-I-N. That's a different, that's Devin and this is Devon. But uh, devontechnologies.com. Um, and, you know, Devon Technologies does, it's not, it isn't only the developer of Devon Think. Uh, they do make Devon Think and it has three different editions depending, you know, with different features and different prices. Uh, but they also make like a really cool web browser called uh, Devon Agent and a bunch of other tools that I use too. So it's it's worth, you know, looking around their offerings. I, I think you'll find a lot to like. Absolutely. And as a Devon, as I t said when we started out, as a Devon Think user, I'm excited about this new book and about a new version. And I would love to have you check it out as well. Joe, thank you for uh, for talking about it. Um, I'm sure we will be hearing from you again in reasonably short order. Oh boy, we have. Um, you know, you you can't see it, but there there is a, there is a whiteboard over there with like 30 sticky notes on it, uh, each representing a book that we are working on. A lot of them are updates. Some of them are new books um, for the next several months, and um, there are. Like there are more books on there than there are weeks in these months, so I don't actually know how we're going to do it, <laughs> but <laughs> but we're we're going to try to squeeze a lot of books because you know like everything is being updated for Catalina and iOS 13, for one thing, and then um, there are other books like this one that that just needed updates for other reasons not connected with the new operating systems, and then of course there are totally new uh, books we're working on that we just think you'll really like because it's a new book on a new topic, so. Um, uh, we will have a lot to talk about in the near future. <laughs> I think the next next interview interview we have scheduled is take control of Joe's whiteboard. Yeah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> look, I I am aware of <laughs> look. Th this is this is an iMac Pro. Okay, this is a really expensive computer that I'm that I'm using to talk to you on. And I am surrounded like I've got an iPad Pro down here. And I've got an iPhone and I've got an Apple Watch. I've got all the toys. Okay. And I have I have all the apps too. I have some really very expensive and powerful apps. I know about them. I'm experienced using them. And yet, 
for some things, paper on a board is just, it just works for me. It's more satisfying. It's like I've dragged many cards to many lists in Trello. Okay, I know about that. I know how to do it. It's fine. But like there's just something about that's not going to be a, a an October book. It's going to be a November book. And I just, I like it. So <laughs> that's, that's what I do. I, you know, I firmly believe in whatever the tool that works for you. And if it happens to be paper and pencil or whiteboard and sticky notes or whatever, you know, use what works for you instead of getting hung up on, on the limitations of some of the, some of the software, it's still not a perfect thing. So, yeah, you know, I mean that, that could itself be, be a chat one of these days. Any Anotco is, is really fond of saying, you know, you're contemplating a new technology purpose, a purchase, um, that's great. There is a shiny new thing out there, but does it solve a problem for you or does it create an opportunity for you? And if not, like it's, it's your money, you know, I mean, it, it's one thing if it's solving a problem, it's another thing if it's just like, I have a shiny new thing and I'm, and I am deeply in agreement with that. I, I, I buy new stuff when it solves problems for me or it opens up opportunities. I don't buy new stuff just to have new stuff. And, um, so there's, I have like this whole philosophy on that, which we could talk about someday, but anyway. That, yeah, that, that would be, a, that, seriously, that'd be a good discussion um, because I, I, I think you and Andy and I share that, that pragmatic thing. We're not immune to the new shiny thing, but sure. I think we're a bit more pragmatic most of the time. And that, see, that most of the time comes from me. This, this is the latest thing, the latest piece of electronics I, I purchased. This is an SSD. It's a, it's a you know, USB 3.0 SSD. And, um, and, I, and I bought this when I was writing Take Control of Upgrading to Catalina because I was doing all these test upgrades and I was doing them on an external drive because I didn't want to mess with the data on my, my internal drive, but they were just taking forever. They were so slow. So I, I got this and, um, and I'm just like, oh, it's just as fast as my internal SSD. It's so fast. And so like this, this little gadget costs a few hundred dollars and it saved me hours and hours and hours of, of time doing all these test installs. So this thing for some people, it would just be like a splurge. For me, it solved a problem of not being able to have time to do all these uh, installations. So, um, I'm I. It is a shiny thing. Okay, it's it's black, but still, I mean, it's <laughs> it's <laughs> shiny metaphorically, but it, it's also something that that um, that does something really helpful for me, and and that's what that's what's important. Okay, before you go, save yeah. us both a bunch of emails. Tell us what make, model, everything about that drive. Okay, so, so this is people... um, this is a SanDisk, and uh, this is um, I can't. So this is the SanDisk Extreme Portable SSD. This is the two terabyte model. They come in different sizes. Um, there are there are others. I mean, um, Samsung makes a bunch of different ones. Uh, Mike, Michael Cohen bought one of the Samsung models. Um, the reason I particularly like this is that uh, they make a big deal out of it being um, waterproof, dustproof, shockproof. Um, now, the other ones might also be those things, but they don't say that they are. And this one says that it is. So if I leave this in my pants and put it in the washer or get caught in the rain or whatever, <laughs> then I don't have to worry about my data. So, and it was like roughly the same price as the other ones. And... I guess you stick a carabiner in here or something. I don't know. But anyway, it, it works just fine. It's super fast. Um, two terabytes cost, I don't know, a few hundred dollars or something. And, uh, and I like it. Okay. Cause I know people are going to say what, tell us about it, what model, how much, you know, that. So folks, I'll do, do a little digging. I'll have it in the show notes so you can find that there too. And awesome. then you can be as fast as Joe is. That's right. Joe, thanks a lot. We will see you again very, real soon. I really appreciate it. Awesome. See you, see you soon. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. I really do hope you will go and take a look at Devin Think. And, and I'm absolutely sincere when I say I've been using it for years. I have not lost any data in it. And actually, I've found data in it that I was really struggling to locate. 
So that that's one of the problems that is solved for me. I guarantee you it can solve some problems for you if you just give it a little time. Until the next time, though, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.